Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, a new season. This time around, we are hosted at Uluwazi Place, located just a few kilometers from Westlands, eight kilometers from the United Nations and the UN uh, in Gigiri. Uh, it is at Kirawa Road uh, in the secure neighborhood of Kitusuru, a fantastic place for your meetings. We'll take you through the lovely amenities that we've got here. Now, on the set today, we have someone that I've been meaning to have here, someone that you've also requested um, in, in, uh, through the development dynamics since you began. And um, I do not know where to begin because she wears different hats. You know, when her and I were talking earlier, we, um, she, she says, I wonder how to box myself in, you know, in terms of just, uh, if you ask me for a bio, I don't even know how I can give a bio. So Dr. Amakove Wala, welcome to Development Dynamics. Thank you so much, Maxi. Uh, very happy to be here. Very privileged for, to have you as a, as a dear guest yeah. in, this, in this space. For you to take your time mm -hmm. uh, to, to be here is an honor, is a privilege. You've been, many people have asked for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored, I'm humbled. And we are really glad that you yeah. could make it here. So we like to, I like to start off by asking us to go back to the very foundations, mm -hmm. to the very, very, very beginning, yeah. uh, to your roots, yes. if, as it were. Um, mm -hmm. Where does it all begin for you from birth, but even before birth, from your origins? Mm -hmm. Where do you, do, if we, we, we are to dig your origins, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. we say someone beget someone, someone yeah. beget someone, yeah, yeah. where does Dr. Wala come from? Where does Wala Makove come from? So that's an interesting question because right. many people assume that I'm a foreigner and exactly. uh, <laughs> based on especially the name Wala, yeah. others assume I'm a man based on the name Amakove yes. or based on what I post. Yeah. So I want to show everyone that I'm a, I'm a woman, I am Kenyan, I come from Bunyore. Not West Africa. Not West Africa, <laughs> not South Africa. Yeah. And um, a village uh, called... Uh, um, Mwilonje, uh -huh. for those who don't know, you pronounce it really well. Yes, <laughs> that's how you pronounce. You have to make the L and the R roll. Yeah, uh, roll so it's not properly. an L and it's not an R. Yeah, and um, you know, there's also this assumption that all Luyas come from Kakamega. So, mm. for us to get to our place, you access it through Kisumu. Uh, uh -huh. So it's like 30 kilometers from Maseno, right. from Kisumu, but from Maseno around six kilometers. So mm -hmm. that's where I come from. Mm. Uh, both parents mm. uh, from that area. Mm. I'm named after my paternal grandma, mm. who was from the Maragoli side. And mm -hmm. so I have swaggerized the name. Ah. Should actually be Amagove. Oh. Because the, yeah, because the, with a G? With a G and with a V with a B. With, oh, I'm a go B. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. So I use uh, a K and a V. I'm mm -hmm. a call. It's lighter mm -hmm. on the tongue. Right. Yeah, so that's where we come from. But I uh, was born in uh, Mombasa. Okay. Actually, all of us, we are uh, eight children. All of us were born in Mombasa. Right. Yeah, but raised mostly, at least for me, because I'm the seventh out of eight, yeah. eight of them. Mm -hmm. I uh, was raised in Kitale, mm. so I'm a rural oh, girl. Wow. Yeah, I love my farming, I love yeah. my countryside. Right. Um, I always look for ways to escape into those spaces again. You were born in Kitale? No, Mombasa. Oh, you were born in Mombasa but yes. raised in Kitale? Yes, yes. How long did you spend in, Ki in, in Mombasa? Uh, maybe five years, not too long, because I had health issues. Mm -hmm. I was born premature, by oh, the way. That uh, is interesting. Yeah, the other day, or uh, rather a couple of years back, I went home and had um, some two weeks with my mom. Mm -hmm. And it was at uh, that point that she told me the story, of story around my birth. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite tragic because mm -hmm. I was born under pressure. She was under pressure for some family issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, she went to the toilet and there I popped. Wow. Yeah, so, she, so I came in April, I was supposed to come in June. Mm. Yeah, so I think with um, the early days, mm. because I was admitted and whatnot for premature uh, issues, mm. um, I couldn't cope very well with the weather in Mombasa. Mm. So the doctors advised them need to move to a cooler area. Mm. Both parents are teachers, mm -hmm. were teachers, so mm. we moved, we got a transfer to Kitale, so quite a... A long distance from Mombasa. Revisiting that story, if yeah. you may, 
of your birth mm-hmm. um did what the circumstance you've been mm-hmm. a public med, medical doctor and also yeah. a public health officer so the story of your birth when you are hearing it mm-hmm. what stands out for you when you had it at the time were there issues around um what were the circumstances around and especially around health and mm. around uh you know the that particular time what was yeah what 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 did it look like at the time when you had that story yes yeah, so we were talking mostly about um personal issues that I was going through mm-hmm. and you know th- i think these are conversations we hardly have with our parents because right. they shelve a lot of pain mm-hmm. and uh, rough experiences mm. so I was even surprised that but i'd gone there alone so mm. usually when i go home i go with my children mm. so there's a lot of distraction mm. and so i think this was a mother to daughter talk mm. and uh, i really cherish that time mm-hmm. um i think for me as a medic i see the kind of pressure we put our women through mm. that it actually has a ripple effect on mm. pregnancy it has a ripple effect on how the parent has their children mm. so there's um there's there's a lot of um social context situations mm. that sometimes we take for granted mm-hmm. that you know this is how things are just green and bare it mm. but for other people it has a health issue yeah, yeah. and yeah. then um i got admitted at pandia mm. hospital those days it was one of the few hospitals in mombasa quite mm. good also mm. so even just given the fact that they are there were teachers you mm. know teachers uh, are not highly paid even mm. those days mm. um just be, to be taken to a private hospital the mm. sacrifices i'm assuming that she mm. had to go through to ensure that i get exactly. the best care mm. yeah so i think um that that was an awakening for me mm. in in things that you know you take for granted yeah. what your parents go through oh, yeah yeah but also the effect on my siblings mm. because my elder sister she's uh, 11 years older mm-hmm. she became a parent to me also because now mm. i was sickly and mm. she had to be with my mom mm. go taking me to hospital mm. and also in school mm. and i remember she kept on saying you know i carried you on my back when you're in nursery school and i have to take you to because mm. you refuse to walk because mm. you you know i was i was weak a weak mm. child i think mm. to put it that way mm. so it's it's a reflection because i went ahead and had preemie children and um i have um four children mm. and uh three of those are triplets mm. so uh reflecting on my experience with my own children mm. and at that time i would believe i had maybe one of the best medical covers mm. and we were here in nairobi one mm. of the best uh one of the best hospitals mm. and i still found it a struggle mm. and i had only one other child mm. so i'm imagining she's here and she has six other children mm. who had doremi faso mm. and mm. <laughs> and then you have this one again mm. so mm. i think it's just to honor our mm. parents mm-hmm. especially our mothers right. and the things they go through mm. and the things that we assume um that um you know uh, women in society go through and mm. we just say you know take it as it is right. and yeah move on and you know do the best you can with what you have right. it has a big implication because this is i'm now 43 years mm. and you can imagine this conversation is happening maybe i think it was it was around 40 years there about mm. she's still carrying that mm. yeah mm. for all those years so mm. it never quite goes away mm. some of this mm. uh, psychological yeah. uh, issues that we go through yeah very yeah. very profound very profound and thank you for sharing that and um so it just i mean i'm sure hearing this you know 40 years later mm. it, it causes a lot of these reflections but mm. now also um we go, we, we go back now to your childhood so you spend a few years in mombasa mm. in mombasa kilifi then you uh, you move to uh, kitale mm-hmm. uh, what what are your fondest memories of kitale is that where you go to school is that where mm. what what uh, do you just move there alone or do you move there as a family mm.